I want to read you a very interesting and mind-bending passage from one of my favorite books, The Emperor's New Mind by Roger Penrose, who is a distinguished mathematical physicist and Nobel Prize winner. What is it that gives a particular person his individual identity? Is it to some extent the very atoms that compose his body? Is his identity dependent upon the particular choice of electrons, protons, and other particles that compose those atoms? There are at least two reasons why this cannot be so. In the first place, there is a continual turnover in the material of any living person's body. This applies in particular to the cells in a person's brain, despite the fact that no new actual brain cells are produced after birth. The vast majority of atoms in each living cell, including each brain cell, and indeed virtually the entire material of our bodies, has been replaced many times since birth. The second reason comes from quantum physics, and by a strange irony is strictly speaking in contradiction with the first. According to quantum mechanics, any two electrons must necessarily be completely identical, and the same holds for any two protons and for any two particles whatsoever of any one particular kind. This is not merely to say that there's no way of telling the particles apart. The statement is considerably stronger than that. If an electron in a person's brain were to be exchanged with an electron in a brick, then the state of the system would be exactly the same state as it was before, not merely indistinguishable from it. The same holds for protons and for any other kind of particle, and for whole atoms, molecules, etc. The entire material content of a person were to be exchanged with the corresponding particles in the bricks of his house then, in a strong sense, nothing would have happened whatsoever. What distinguishes the person from his house is the pattern of how his constituents are arranged, not the individuality of the constituents themselves.